Now I'd like to share with you a game between two very strong grandmasters in order to understand how to play professional chess. And without further ado, let's start. With white pieces we have Banikas, he played e4, and with black pieces Papa Ioannou, two Greek players. Now we have knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Spanish defense, as you know, a6, bishop a4, the main line, knight to c6, castling, he cannot really capture that pawn because we have rook e1 after that in order to attack the king because the king is in the center of the board. So bishop to e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, d6, c3, he would like to strike in the center. And now we have short castling, h3, h3, prophylaxis to stop this uh, idea, bishop to g4, bishop b7, and d4, attacking the center. And now rook e8, very nice uh, positional move, he would like to capture here and create some pressure against e4 pawn. And now we have knight g5, attacking on f7, forcing him to go back. And after rook f8, we have knight f3. It's okay to repeat the position once, and now we have rook e8, rook e8 again. He played knight g5, back, and now he played that. So players agree to the draw. Thank you very much and goodbye. No! No! What shall I do? They just agree the draw, right? But in order to compensate you, I'm going to give you this fantastic game. Papa Ioannos with white pieces, Alexakis Georgios with black. We have these moves, knight f6, knight f3 and e6. Bishop to g5, he would like to develop his pieces, this is Trombovsky attack and in this move order, he would like to avoid any Boko Indian defense. So we have d5 right now, e3, and he's played, he is playing a very solid game. This is the professional chess because he would like to develop his pieces, controlling the center, develop everything, castling maybe short side, and after that he will see how to proceed to the game. This is the idea, this is how to play in real tournaments. And uh, black has a lot of ways to equalize this position, bishop e7 for example, it's one of them, it's okay to play like this, but the main problem is that it's difficult to do something more with black, to real press white. This is the real problem actually. And black should be extremely careful. We have knight b to d2, short castling, knight d3, knight b to d7, c3, a very solid system here. And please notice that he developed the bishop first of all, and after that he closed the center with e3. This is very important to keep the bishop outside of the pawn chains. And now we have c5, he would like to strike in the center. We have knight e5, controlling everything there. And uh, black here has many, many ways to continue the game, but he should be careful because the most natural move in the world, something like b6 in order to develop the bishop, this is very natural, it uh, ran to knight c6. And now queen and bishop are under attack. So white can get the bishop pair in this position. But he can play something else like queen c7 or maybe h6. Everything is possible. During the game he played rook to e8. His idea is to put the knight here on f8 to overprotect the king side. Little passive but it's possible as well. The computer says the po assess the position as uh, approximately equal 0-0-0. We have a 4 here, the Pleadsbury set up, try to put this uh, in the center of the board to create this very very strong outpost and after that he can continue building his attack. For example, he can play short castling and the rook can join the attack like this way, the Kasparov rook. And now we have knight f8 and uh, now f4. He would like to advance forwards the pawns. And now you are going to ask me why he's leaving the king in the center of the board, right? This is this looks strange. It is strange, it is an advanced technique actually and he can do it because black don't have any good or any possible way to open up the center. For that reason his, his king here in the center of the board is totally secure and he would like to start attacking the enemy king side because black decided to castle in short side. Now we have h6 the bishop has to do something because it's under threat, so we have this exchange here and queen h5. Can you see the threat? Yep, it is on f7 pawn because this pawn is unprotected. Queen e7 and knight to g4. 
putting more pressure right now. He's not threatening anything specifically. He is not threatening just to capture the bishop or he is not threatening to capture the pawn, but he would like to improve the position of his pieces. Maybe he can play knight f3 and after that he will see. He will see what he is going to do. Now we have some exchanges in the center of the board and black played a very very nice move. I really like that move. He played b5. Hey, what a minute. It looks a dubious move, right? Because we can capture this move with a bishop. But we should see ahead because this is a part of the plan. He played b5 with the idea to open up lines on the queen side. This is the idea. And black offering a pawn in order to exchange this light square bishop with that bishop on c8. And uh, by exchanging this d3 bishop, white attack will decrease a lot. For that reason, strong players evaluate this position and sometimes you have to do the same because your pieces could value more than a pawn. You should assess in this position. This bishop is very powerful here on d3 and with combination with other pieces, pieces can create a very strong attack. For that reason here, Ioannis with white pieces played a very nice prophylactic move characteristic of strong players and he played a3 the idea is to stop or make more more difficult this breakthrough on b5 and now we have a5 knight to f3 rook b8 knight f e5 improving the position of the pieces and uh, both sides are running with his uh, strategical plan right white tried to do something in the king side and black tried to do something on the queen side but right now black has a lot of problems for example if he just uh, continue with the most natural move in the world with b4 it's running to knight c6 again as you can see because the rook and the queen are under attack here and there for that reason he cannot play this one. During the game he played g6, I can totally understand this one, it's a mistake actually, but he would like to release the tension, to, to do something there, to close some lines. It's a mistake because this pawn is uh, hanging, he would like to exchange queens in order to stop the attack, for that reason he is offering a pawn. Maybe he can try something like that, but white can continue building his attack. For example, he can capture, queen takes, rook h3, another piece joined the attack. But we cannot say the same for black pieces, because the black pieces cannot join the defense. These pieces cannot really help the king side, so white step by step can build up. For example, it's an illustrative variation. For example, we can play here, rook e to b8, knight g4, putting more pressure, the queen is under attack, and after this, the accident will happen. Knight takes h6, this is check, pawn cannot capture, because it is spin thanks to the rook. So, they didn't play that one, he played g6, tried to reduce this pressure, we have a check, queen takes, queen takes h6, and now he played during the game queen g7. But if he just play b4, for example, we can continue with h4. Pawn takes, now we have a very strong intermediate move. Zivan Zuk, he can capture on g6. Because he is threatening now on f7, he has to recapture, and after that he can capture the pawn. Rook b7, and with that, with this intermediate moves, we would like to speed up our uh, plan. This is the idea, or to speed up our threats. So, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook b7, knight g4, queen g7, and of course we have to keep the queens on uh, the board in order to create an attack, queen here on g5, a4 for example, and the knight is uh, joining the attack with devastating effects, knight f6, and now black don't have a lot of options, for example here we have a check, king there, and we can capture the queen. This is another illustrative uh, variation actually how to build up the attack with the white pieces and now we have queen to g7 and strong players don't afraid to exchange queens because they know a lot of uh, things in the end game so we have here queen takes king takes king d2 the king is safe in the center of the board and now we have b4 what are you going to do now with white pieces it's very very important moment and i'm going to give you a, a very nice strategical tip that immediately will increase your rating by 50 points and here i'd like to share with you something would you like to become sure and get stable result that says then i'm recommending you this training program divided in years according to feeder rating for example 800 1000 1100 1200 
and if you click in any of these links then you can see the curriculum of each lesson here you can see a small video and the very detailed description of the lesson please also notice that you can see a lot of puzzles try to solve them we have puzzles with 10 questions for every single training program it's completely free and you can try it out the basic methodology of the training program is that we are get the basic ideas then we have illustrative chess examples specific exercises for each theoretical lesson and last but not least the final conclusions the main difference from other programs is that here we are going to analyze the typical opening errors how to avoid them the characteristic middle game errors of each level learn the basic end games and last but not least the visualization program this is very important because it will help you to foresee the chess move ahead and calculate better comparing to your opponents you can get the package of four of these training programs which contain 95 theoretical lessons approximately 780 minutes it analyzed 800 games in this fantastic final prize so time for action is now and click the link in the description white played c takes before a takes before very natural but now a4 creating a passed pawn and very important passed pawn f6 the knight should go back rook a8 and b3 look at that beauty the pawn is connected here black cannot do anything about that and white can increase uh, the activity of his pieces controlling the file for example not only that because he is a pawn up and he can start doing something in the other side of the board so this position is uh, completely winning but the players uh, should not black player should not resign right now he should play the position is strategically winning because white has a very clear plan to improve his position so we have bishop a6 takes takes and rook a c1 rook e7 to control the seventh rank rank c4 try to increase uh, the pressure and push his pawns forward there knight d7 and instantly rook c7 so black pieces don't have activity they are cramped and she cannot do a lot of things now we have rook there and rook on b7 try to highlight the weakness attack the weakness and after king to f7 we have g5 here he played knight f8 to liberate himself and this position is winning because black cannot create uh, any active counterplay this is the real problem and now he just captured the pawn and the position is uh, winning because step by step he can start pushing his pawns forward in the king side or maybe on the queen side like that so black don't have anything to do thanks for your time and i hope you enjoyed the video here it's time for action this is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you are going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So time for action is now and you are very welcome to join my mail list.